Okay. Welcome to our channel, Unity for Gaia. And uh, I am Melly, and this is my husband, Ivan. And <laughs> we haven't been on here in quite some time. If you've seen our past videos and you see the dates, uh, this last six months of our life, six months, seven months? Seven. Yeah. Um, has been quite a, a lot of changes. We've moved across the country and uh, all kinds of stuff. So uh, we are back and hoping to bring you, intending to bring you, lots of good content with everything we've been going through in our healing, awakening, ascension journey, uh, discussions, things to help you. And so today we are going to talk about ascension symptoms, the ascension process, the physical body, um, what we've learned and how we are experiencing this, and maybe some of the things that a lot of people talk about in the New Age spiritual community uh, in regards to ascension symptoms, but there really isn't a deep dive into why you feel squirrely like crap, sick, etc. <laughs> so, uh, Ivan, do you have anything you'd like to add to that before we deep dive in? Squirrely. Squirrely, yes. Really? Yes. You are squirrels. <laughs> um, oh, what do you want to talk, talk about? Are you, do you want to point out the actual physical effects of it? Or what's the process? Or what is it? Like, um, a lot of people have, you know, we all have this whole, oh, I feel off today. Or why do you feel off? Is that the direction that you're, we're going? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I kind of roped him into this. It's been on my mind for the last um, few weeks to get back on and start doing videos in our flavor. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm her sidekick in, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> and uh, I, um, I have like, I'm like, we're just going to go. We're going to do this. And, you know, he's busy like doing things in the house and putting new like locks on our doors. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're going to go. Are you ready? <laughs> so <laughs> Busy bodies. Well, there's <laughs> really just so you know, uh, for those of you that are new to this or seeing our videos, I am, or we are very intuitive. I'm very clear audio. And <laughs> so in certain moments, I end up looking up a lot, and it's not because I'm lost in the sauce, it's because literally spirits talking to me. Um, and a lot of times, it's very comical, especially when you're going through some symptoms, like uh, some days we both get plenty of sleep, and we get up, and all of a sudden we're both uh, feel like we've been working a 48-hour shift, feel like you got run over by a couple buses, <laughs> um, and not the short little ones either. So, and then, you know, begs the, begs the question, what's going on? Why do, why do we feel sometimes like we're dragging butt or whatever the case and it is, it is, whether it's the Schumann resonance, uh, there's the possibility of going through purges. Um, sometimes your body is recalibrating, rebalancing itself, especially if you've done some healing work. Uh, the healing work may happen in a certain instance, but the body takes a little bit of time to, to catch up. But, they, you know, it can go on and on. And I'll just pass it over to my beloved since the lioness is in charge. I'm just... Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've been um, thinking about what I've been calling the biogenetic rehabilitation. And what that means is we're literally coming in and rehabilitating the biology, the physical body at a genetic, at, you know, a very deep cellular DNA level. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff out there as far as the ascension process goes, you know, videos talking about ascension symptoms and others who are very sometimes prominent um, and have a lot of followers and viewers giving kind of confusing and different ideologies and perceptions about what it means. 
I just want to start this by saying that my process is the organic process. Um, I am not in favor of using technology to enhance or activate DNA or anything else. That is not, we are um, full organic ascension. That is what we support. Uh, unity for Gaia. Unity begins within, and it's bringing everything into union within ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, and being able to create the proper bio landscape in the physical body all the way through to a cellular level to be able to embody and bring in, you can call it a walk-in, higher self, but to be able to bring in those energies. For example, um, channeling would kind of be a good reference point just to give an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, most people think of channeling as the channel like here I am and something steps in consciously to me or I bring something through and I'm channeling it and you know higher versions of self people say my higher self you know I, I'm channeling right mm -hmm. so when you really begin the embodiment and that weaving together of your light body into your physical body all those memories that are stored in your light field genetic DNA right your spirit DNA your soul DNA that is weaving in and activating with your physical DNA to express and accrete through the body all that light that information should be coming through you at a cellular level you are embodying that information so it's not a separate channel it's an embodiment so that's kind of how I describe that and what I mean, which would be a good example, not being something external to you, but being embodied by you and coming through you. Here's something to point out. Uh, what does that mean? What does what mean? Embodying your, you know, your light body, your source essence, your, if you want to call it your higher self. What does, what's the byproduct of that? You know, because one thing is to say and another thing is for people to start to understand, like, what does that mean? How does that look? Because we're such visual right. people. Right? Well, right now, if, uh, what is the date today? I don't even know what the dates are anymore. I know it's like November 7th, maybe? November 6th or 7th, 2022. 5th, I believe. So, we're, we're right there, right? The beginning, the first weekend in November of 2022. <laughs> And recently, just in the last, it's been coming. If you are on this path and this journey this year, you've been able to feel, I'm sure, like we have, you can feel the frequencies, the energy, just pressing in and pressing in and pressing in on you. Like, um, I call it running your face over. Like, <laughs> you know, it's intense. It's just intense. And uh, what I'm seeing on a lot of like different um, telegram groups and just different chats and channels, um, you know, things on Facebook, underneath YouTube videos, what have you, is people talking about what they're going through right now or feeling the energy and how the energy affects them, which is, you know, a common topic in the awakened and, you know, starseed spiritual communities. And that's really kind of what like catapulted this off to make this video uh, something that we've been talking about in our house in our lives a lot as the ascension energies and how they come in and how that light wants to come through your body you know you can call it energy you can call it our soul our spirit it's all light it's all light from source it's that pure source light energy and what has happened on this planet for millennia is that the vessel, the physical body, everything has been really, um, I don't want to say attacked because that kind of gets people into the, oh, I've been under attack and it's not that, but. How about the word diluted? Diluted. Yeah. yeah. There, there's been um, a lot of work being done to really keep these bodies from being able to fully embody, to be able to really hold that high frequency, that light, and to be those anchors of light, right? To be those antennas of just 
pure source light accreting and just vibrating on the planet and everything that's in your field is just, you know, bathed in this pure organic source light and realigned and cleared. So there's been quite a <laughs> quite a heavy-handed multi-layered operation going on, right? To stop that from happening. And so the light coming in now is just pushing through that and you can feel it. So if you are having a lot of ascension symptoms, you are feeling sick, you are purging. And by purging, I mean everything from like vomiting to fevers to just downright sickness symptoms. Even though you're not sick, it's only temporary. Right. There's, um, that is literally your physical body telling you it needs to be aligned to be able to hold these energies. And the energies are pressing, right, you to do that. So so here's the thing, because, you know, you're talking about, you know, your body is telling you about aligning the body and how do you align the body, right? Yeah. You start figuring out that sometimes, not sometimes, I think it's, thank you. Um, it's correct to say that if you're, if you have certain habitual ways of mm, living, yeah, eating, uh, et cetera, drinking certain things, consuming certain things, and your body, and you feel sick from it, that's your body telling you to please stop. There's so much light and uh, coming, coming into the physical body that is pushing, if you can imagine a plunger coming from the top and pushing that all the way out of your system what's at the bottom come on we all go to the restroom <laughs> it's literally pushing all that that is not in alignment that does not uh, help the body vibrate vibrate and be vibrant you know physically uh, out of your body and you end up purging you end up detox detoxifying your body to be able to hold more light in the body so i.e purging Right, another word for detoxification, um, and you know you might be a fan of Doritos, cheeses, dairies, breads. Hello, um, and then all of a sudden your body's is, in my example, started showing me that mm, bread is is going outbound, and even though you have a love for bread, that's going on outbound for now. There may be a potential different type of bread that I may consume, but based on what I have seen, not just from, from myself, but from other people, you didn't have to start changing because your body wants to be that full embodiment of, if you want to call it Christ consciousness or Christ energy, source energy, all one and the same, to restructure your physical body at a DNA level and rejuvenate yourself at a DNA level from the inside to the outside. And that is the whole process of all this. But um, so yeah. you tapped into something good there that we should expound upon, which is that forced purging. It doesn't have to be so rough and hard. There doesn't have to be all this forced purging. If you consciously take up detoxing, clearing, and aligning your physical body to accept these energies more with ease and grace, really, truly. And so that, that comes through, you know, there's a lot of things. Um, I, we had somebody, um, was talking about how the energies are really making them sick, like throwing up, purging. And there's this thing that goes around in the new age and spiritual community. That's just crap. I'll go ahead and say it, it's crap. And it's this thing like, well, you just have to believe in it and want these energies and like, it's just going to happen. You're going to align. You're going to get there. And this process is work. It is commitment. It is not just like you can be aware and be really, you know, ungrounded and floating around in la la land and bathing in these good frequencies that feel good. But if you are getting sick and purging and throwing up and you feel awful and you have tons of headaches and um, you're still, you know, feeding addictive trait things like smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, sodas, whatever it is, you know, putting these chemicals and things into the body. The body cannot align 
with the energies that you desire to hold, period. Nobody likes to hear that. Nobody wants to hear it. But, you know, I'm going to be kind of hard about it here. And it is the truth. Uh, lots of times you see people, I see people who are very, um, they're doing a lot of guided meditations. They're doing a lot of things such as uh, QHT, HT sessions or soul retrieval. And they're running around to this healer and that healer and this person and that person. And they're trying to bring all this information in and find out who they are and stuff it into, you know, and be able to actually internalize it as part of their, their structure here. But the body is, you know, they're trying to put paradise into the garbage can at Walmart. And I don't mean that to be harsh, but it, it, it's, it, it's just that. It is um, the lower three chakras, right, of your energy body. Everything you hold there still that you haven't cleared out, that you haven't healed, um, you know, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, all these things need to be in alignment. And the more you bring them into alignment and the more you do all that work to get it all lined up, the more you begin to embody these higher frequencies and energies. And while you can be tired sometimes, you know, um, I just went through a couple days ago where it wasn't that I wasn't really having enough sleep. It was just the energy coming in was so powerful and strong and wanted to come in and integrate and calibrate. I just, you know, my body, I know it well enough at this point. It was like mm, some raw juicing and barely any food. Like for a couple right. days, it was juicing and water and not really much else. Um, a little bit of like, you know, a sweet potato or something like that, right? But then you come out of it and you feel okay and you feel better, whereas some other people are feeling really sick. They're throwing up. They can't eat. And the quality of what you're putting in the body, the detoxing process, this is an ongoing thing. And you cannot make it um, happen and change overnight, but there has to be a commitment to really diving in and staying on that path. It's a lifestyle change that you have to be not just aware, but honor your physical body because that this is the vehicle that you navigate your life. And if you if your intent and focus is to be your the highest frequency vibration embodied of your own higher essence, or assist in bringing the, that energy to assist the whole planet and assist the, assist the whole collective together, then this, it needs to be purified till just like a, a gardener tills the soil to plant the seeds and so on and so forth. Treat this as if you're about a garden. Go yeah. Garden your own, what's that? Paradise garden or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, and you know, this is why you see a lot of things um, in the uh, spiritual communities, the New Age community, where they talk about detoxing, fasting, veganism, um, and we're going to kind of tap into some of that, of why that actually is. There isn't a lot of people, teachers out there in the New Age community that have a really deep... Um, scientific biological based foundation to explain what they're speaking about or maybe they do and they just don't give that foundation uh so that that's kind of one of the places that goes wrong and people when they haven't gone through their healing and they're still in the beginning of their journey they feel judged you know you probably already feel judged if you're eating mcdonald's <laughs> and drinking a soda and having a smoke while you listen to this like you know, you're like, well, who's, who's she be talking about this or whatever? And it literally is just, it's about purifying the body for embodiment of those higher frequencies. You know, sometimes they come in and you feel really ungrounded and you get like super high on them or whatever. And part of the reason that's happening is because you can't get them down into the physical body and anchor them the way you desire to. You're just kind of, you know, floaty, floaty and 
you, you see people like that um, sometimes being interviewed or you have friends like that and they're so ungrounded, they don't even make sense. Like they're literally not coherent. They make no sense when they're speaking and it, it's just kind of all over the place. They make sense to themselves. No one else. <laughs> but no one else, you know? Right. So the diet thing, um, first of all, I think we're all kind of aware that the food supply the commercial food supply, the food supply industry is toxic. It is full of chemicals. The food has all been genetically modified unless you buy things that actually say they are, I call it GMO, non-GMO on them, <laughs> um, processed dead food. There's so much out there that is mainstream diet. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't have a lot of money. I can't afford to eat this and that and da 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 you could go to the produce section and get organic fruits and vegetables and some nuts and eat that. And right now, with the way things are, like the meat industry, meat and stuff is super expensive. So I know for what you're spending on meat, you could go, you know, eat something else. Um, you could even get a, like a natural organic peanut butter and stick it in a piece of organic celery and that would be a much better meal than you know a 99 cent cheeseburger at the drive through somewhere you know with all the, the the meats and everything else they put on so mystery meats it, it's not just that there's a lot of chemicals and preservatives in the production it's what it does in your gut it's what it does in your intestines and what it does in your body and the organs of how, you know, they're working to process and how hard they're working. Um, GMOs, for instance. Oh, maybe this is going to get this video taken down. So genetically modified foods, when they enter into your intestines, into your colon and your guts, that is where we absorb nutrients so that our cells rebuild, our DNA, the messages are sent through, um, the proteins there, the amino acids, everything's processed and broken down. Studies, scientific studies, and it's not just me saying stuff, have shown that genetically modified foods actually damage the gut so that you are not absorbing nutrients and it affects you at a DNA and a cellular level. So if you have had an awakening and you're feeling like crap, and you've been on this ascension journey, and you're meditating, you're doing all these things, and you are purging like crazy all the time, you probably need to clean out and heal your gut, which is also connected to your root, sacral, and solar plexus, those lower three chakra centers that are part of your energetic body in the physical. Uh, do you have anything you want to add about that before I go on? Uh... Three lower shot. Three. Three. <laughs> I smart good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, three lower chakras, uh, just an FYI, is not, the root chakra is not just how you ground sacral and your solar plexus is your strong, your strong force to root yourself into the ground. So you start addressing those three lovely chakras. Starts from the gut, works all the way down. Follow the gut, goes that way. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyways, starts. I can't. You're the one that has more of a. Well, what? no, you're tapping into something important there because you know, if we want to anchor all that light in through the crown, we want to have that flow, we want our toroidal field uh, to align, we want everything going good and clean, right? If the lower three chakras are clogged up like a bad drain. You don't have a good straight passage to root it into the ground. And if you treat your body as a tree, the tree needs strong roots to go to that ground, to go to the center of the world, you know. You grab it by yes. the hemisphere, and then you glow and you have butterflies and stuff. <laughs> But the point is, the path to ground those higher frequencies goes through your tummy. Fix your tummy, clear your tummy, detoxify your tummy, 
goes down and then it continues working down your sacral and you, then your roots mm -hmm. and then because you your body the core is what the essential part of the human body you know when it comes to working out yes 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 okay it's very important so not only in the physical not only in the energetic and where else do you want to go in that direction and that's how you start working your way down the toilet <laughs> well down the, you know, um, a lot of the things such as eating meat, I'll, I'll tap on that one because me personally, um, I ate meat when I was growing up because, you know, that's what you're fed and that's what you have to. I don't like meat. I actually don't like meat. And I became vegetarian two, almost two decades ago because I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the way I feel after I eat it. And I love animals and I don't see the need to kill something for myself to live. And that's part of the system that we are actually wanting to change, right? That we want to honor all life. So for me, that was just a no. But meat is dense. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. And meat, energetically, on an energetic level, you know, you're saying that something else has to die for me to live. And that's how I see it. And so there's a vibration there, not to mention how the animals are treated. Mm -hmm. The emotions the animals had when they were slaughtered or died or whatever else, it's embedded right? In it. What they were feeded, the chemicals, the foods they ate, they're your intermediary between you and, you know, you, you're consuming whatever they ate as well, right? Instead of just directly eating like a salad, you know, the cow ate the salad, which is the grass, and now you're eating the cow, so to speak. So that would cause, you know, I'm going to go uh, citizen demographic. Now you're a sec first, what do you call that? A first grade vegetarian. Mm -hmm. you, you eat the vegetables, which get their food source from the light, from the sun, sun, nutrition, vegetables. Now you got, you're, a, you're a second rate vegetarian because you are eating the meat instead of going straight to the source, which is the plants, which again, right. it not just does it help you feel lighter, but the amount of time that it takes to to process all yeah. that so and it's really hard it's dense and heavy in your guts you know it's very hard it takes a long time to process and break down the meat so you have all that sitting in there as well and mm -hmm. we have you know parasites if you're not doing a parasite cleanse um, heavy metal detox from all the metals you know if you've been eating out of a lot of cans if you've been cooking with a lot of foil um, if you've been using regular deodorant with aluminum in it all of these things accumulate in the body. So there needs to be a heavy metal detox. I'm and gonna, can, do you yeah. get a moment? Yeah. I'm gonna point something out. Uh, the human body is an electrical system. Uh, if you guys don't know, now you know. What happens when you take an electrical circuit and you take that the positive, the hot side, the voltage side, amperage side, I don't care, the, the power side, and you go straight to ground, it shorts out the system. It's the system, the electrical system stops working. So when you put all those metals into your physical body, because we are electrical, it shorts out our system. And then you can view it as over the years, a body that short circuits day after day, this starts looking worn out, decaying, versus a body that doesn't have any metals, looks very radiant and so on and so forth. Yes. I just wanted to add that in. Just because no. you were talking about the metals and I'm like, yes. You're on it. That's a good point. On a deeper level, why do they want everybody full of metals? Because they want you to be little faux antennas for their weird transhumanum 5G and all the weird artificial frequencies they send to you. They want you to be picking up and conducting that electrical grid instead of the source organic one. But that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, we could go hours <laughs> in that direction. So, there is the energetics of your eating, your diet, what you're putting in there, right? So, the physicality of your body, what you are doing to detox it, to take care of it. And there's so many things you can do. There is not a specific, like, this is the, the menu you follow for ascension. Everybody get in line. You're going to have three days of a water fast. Then we're going to do a juice cleanse. Next, we line up with a parasitic cleanse because you need to get rid of the parasites. Then we're doing a heavy metal detox. 
and then we're going to slowly reintroduce you to this, 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 and that. We're not doing, it doesn't work like that. If you are in a place where you've been eating like, you know, fast food or processed food or a lot of meat or dairy or whatever it is, and that's been your main diet, you know, there has to be some steps you take right. an elimination process, uh, whether it's, you know, okay, I'm giving up like beef and, you know, heavier meats and I'm just going to eat fish and a little bit of chicken and I'm going to go from eating meat twice a day to, you know, every other day and it's going to be something lighter and then I'm going to wean myself off of that and see how I feel and slowly lightening up because if you just go from like I'm full of toxicity to I want to go on a fast and start cleansing, you're going to get super sick because you're gonna bring all those toxins out. Your liver is not going to be in a place where it can actually process the toxins out properly and you are going to get super sick. And I've seen that happen for years to people and then they're like, oh, this isn't for me, I can't do this. And they go right back to filling their body with junk, you know, the same diet, you know, the same thing. So there's the energetics of what you eat. There's the density of what you're eating and the body needs to be cleaned out. And the more you clean and clear out your body, those things will just fall away. They just won't taste good anymore, they won't sound good anymore, or you'll circle back and eat some bread and feel like, oh, okay. Yeah. It put me in a food coma, I didn't feel that good, I was kind of tired. And that's what happens, that's what happened. So <laughs> yeah, I needed a, def a defibrillator a couple of times. And it was still like good, you know, um, organic non-GMO wheat bread, but still like it's, you know. Your, your body, um, as long as you listen to your body and you're gradually doing things to better uh, help yourself and not go off of, oh, this is a habit. Well, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. These creatures named humans are not do not have are not creatures of habit we are very um dynamic we are very multifaceted we have these beautiful human bodies these bodies that we chose to embody in that can do phenomenal stuff if you give your body the opportunity and more specifically not just the opportunity it comes back to loving your body loving who you are i don't care if you weigh 500 pounds to 25 pounds. You give your body the love it it wants, it, it yearns for. And it'll love you back. Exactly. Um, yes. And as far as the foods go, just follow what your body wants. Your body's going to guide you. Well, you can't say follow what your body wants because well, most people have been following what their body wants, but their body's been so full of like, you know, unhealed stuff and, yeah, you know, addictions and, you know, so it's like, yeah. well, you know, my inner child wants a Twinkie. Really? Or is that yeah. the parasites in your belly telling you, or is it an emotional attachment because there was a point in your life where you associate Twinkies with something that's with, good? With uh, comfort. Across the board, the Twinkie shouldn't happen. It's well, like chemical foam with fake cream in it that's posing as food. <laughs> Just no, don't do it. No. It is what it is. No. It seriously, it <laughs> is what it is. No, but what I mean by listen to your body, listen to what what feels, what makes your body feel lighter, what feel, makes your body feel better. Not your habits of. I'll, I'll put myself on blast. I'm Mexican. I'm used to pachangas and fiestas and all this stuff type of stuff. A lot of our culture is in the Mexican culture. It has carnitas. A, carnitas. <laughs> Trust me, I come from the home state of uh, Southwest Mexico. I'm not going to divulge that information because it's personal. But um, <laughs> I come from, from the state that actually came up with carnitas. And I grew up with a lot of the heavy grease, the goat meats, the beef, the pork, the chicken, the turkeys. What else is there? Um, I'm just going to stop there. A lot of heavy meats, a lot of heavy stuff that tastes really good. It's very flavorful. But afterwards, every single time that I would go to parties and it's just, not just me, other people, what do people want to do after that? They put themselves into a food coma. Does your body feel great? No, it feels very sluggish. Ugh. So start observing what makes your, feel, your body feel good after you eat it. Are you bogged down? Do you feel tired? No, 
Well, right? congratulations. You're, you're on track and you're listening to your body. What makes your body feel good? That's what I mean by yeah. listen to your body. And then follow that path and you'd be surprised. Right. Like, do you have a lot of gas and indigestion? You know, <laughs> like if you got a lot of gas and indigestion, your food doesn't like the body. It's talking to you, you know, that That's... expression talking out your ass. <laughs> Yeah, no. no. That that's a, that's a clear one that the body's telling you no, 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 no. Um, so with authority beyond the the physical part of let's say f below the heart level, right in the body, what we put in our body, the eating, um, the the energy of the food. Uh, like we've been eating all our food at home, and I am to the point where. I don't even like to eat out because I can feel the frequency off the person that cooked the food. I can feel what's coming off of whoever prepared the food and I don't want their frequency in my body. And I don't want it to play around with clearing my food in a restaurant and embedding it with another frequency. And most places you eat out, it's commercial grade food anyways. Right. So just no. So we eat at home and that's, that's luckily he likes my cooking. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I married a magician in the kitchen, so I'm a lucky, lucky dude in that regard. No, that the that is interesting because it it ties into everything. Once you start doing your mm, the work for your body, you start realizing how much more sensitive your body is, and just like she has made mention. You start even feeling like if was someone in a really good mood when they prepared the meal or were they in a crappy mood and just like meh. Like a lot of people choose to participate in jobs that they really don't like and you can, believe it or not, feel that in the food and you're like, okay, someone was pissed. I don't know. And all of a sudden, the, the food that you enjoyed eating because of the taste, it's got a, a pinch of some something else that doesn't make it so such an enjoyable dish. I know. And I want to go to the restaurant where like everyone's dancing and singing in the kitchen, and they got good music on, and the food's organic, and fairies are coming around and putting a little sprinkle of this, a little sprinkle of that on your stuff, and you eat it, and you're just like, woo! <laughs> and you li you literally not to be. I'm just gonna call it how it is. Screw it. You start you start getting high off the food, literally. Because your body's so so detoxified and so sensitive to food that when pe someone's preparing the food like that, you are like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> Hi, fairies. Ooh. Yeah, don't bring the already ungrounded people there. <laughs> They'll be stuck on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, <laughs> in, in just, you know, the physical part of our body there tied into the chakras. Um, the organs, the endocrine system, all of it works together. So when you have things that energetically you haven't healed either, that's another part of it. And mm -hmm. when the body there physically is all clogged up and then energetically you're all clogged up, that's where you get the people who are totally like spiritually unhinged and unglued. Um, they're crying a lot. Their emotions are all over the place. They're super unstable. They are running around looking everywhere for answers instead of going within. And hey, you know, you're watching us talk. On. I mean, we watch videos. We listen to people because we want community. We want to see what's going on. And it's like, hey, maybe there's something there for me that'll, you know, something I haven't looked at a different way mm -hmm. before. But it's all meant to take you back inward. Not to externalize, like, well, this person has all the answers and I'll just follow everything they say and it's going to work for me too because it doesn't because we're all individual and it doesn't work that way, right? We're all unique. Mm -hmm. But that's where you get into um, the people that have a lot of that going on or they're very, um, you know, just physically rocked by the energy that's coming in. So uh, the addictions, right? And the addictions can be to sugar, Sugar is a huge addiction. Thank goodness I came with like a fail safe that I really don't like sugar. Um, I wasn't allowed to drink soda pop growing up and I don't like it. Right. Uh, I wasn't allowed to eat candy. 
and I very rarely, I eat like some organic gummy bears once in a while, like a little mini pack of them, because I'm like, oh, I just want a couple gummy bears, and then I'm satisfied, and that's it for like right. six months or something. <laughs> But there's sugar is a huge addiction and the body being addicted to sugar. Um, and it's so bad. It is, it's so bad for us. It weighs you down. It inhibits your ascension process. It affects you at a cellular level. You know, so many things like cancer actually feeds and grows off of sugar. Literally. There's so many reasons to get rid of the sugar addiction. Uh, the food addiction, which is rooted in the emotional body. So if you have an addiction to food, you know, to certain foods, to eating, uh, sometimes it goes back to your inner child, that there's certain things there that, you know, this is what made me feel good. And, you know, I'm, and we say, oh, well, I'm making my inner child happy. Well, yeah. okay. So the sugary hot fudge sundae and ice cream might emotionally make your inner child happy, but physically, it's making the adult version body of you not so, happy. not so happy. So, you know, we're in charge of the body. <laughs> and, you know, we have to be able to work that out in a way that is positively beneficial mm -hmm. and let go of making those excuses. Addictions, addictions are rooted in those lower chakras, the addictive behaviors, the addiction patterns. You know, whether it's smoking, vaping, um, drinking, whatever it is, lots of times it is um, an addiction pattern that's ancestral that you've inherited as well, right? Right. So there, there's so many things that come into this ascension process because while we're raising our consciousness up, right, we're trying to take our cellular body and vibrate it at a higher level, the frequency of our biology to a higher level. We're also descending and trying to have that marriage in the middle of bringing in those higher frequencies. So it's those two things coming together. And if you are trying to pull in your higher self, you're trying to pull in, you know, oh, I want my third eye on, or I want to be able to see this or understand this or have my crown open or embody this or whatever else, the physical body needs to be prepared, prepared. Mm -hmm. it needs to be prepared it needs to be clean and it's an ongoing process it, it's all the time um something that i've been doing for hmm, gosh has it been four years now well there was some time off when we lived down south because they don't have them down there really anywhere uh, but that's going to the sauna yeah at the gym and so sitting in the sauna for 20, 25 minutes and just, you know, like three, four times a week purging, purging your, your cells, not going when you're full. We go to the gym. So, you know, we're already several hours out of eating and then we go in after a workout mm -hmm. and, you know, sit in the sauna, um, sitting in a bath that's full of Epsom salts, you know, a hot bath as high as you can take it where you know you close the bathroom door and you steam and you sit in there and you purge and you sweat all that out using charcoal soap um you know a nice organic one afterwards to wash all those toxins off the body drinking lots of clean purified water uh what you put on your skin what you put in your environment are you cleaning your house with chemicals because there's all kinds of natural plant-based cleaners out there i've been using them for 20 years and they've only gotten better and better and better what are you putting on your skin are you putting you know jergens lotion on your skin that's full of petroleum based chemicals or are you putting something natural you know shea butters and coconut oil and things that are clean on your skin so what are you putting on in the external environment your body is in to, as well to help support mm -hmm. you know that's a really that's a big one so it's getting all the chemicals out of your life Get you know, the chemicals out. I keep on hearing one word. You keep on saying over and over and over. What's that? Chemicals. Yes. Your body is a, chem a chemical composition. And if you put, not just with the food. Well, we're, we're on food. All right, I'll stick with food. I'm being told to stick with that. Um, when you put chemicals that don't marry well, harmonize, thank you, uh, with the chemicals in your body, it goes without saying you you throw your body way out of whack just like when um well screw it 
when you take certain medicines that are supposed to help you, right? But the side effects are much worse than what it's meant to do. You're disrupting majorly the chemical composition of your physical body versus if you take uh, whether it's teas or herbs of any sort that are meant to marry well and harmonize with your body that are actually going to address whatever issue it is that you have and cure the issue versus tossing a chemical compound into your body and create a chemical explosion and get yourself all cross-eyed and stuff just because, well, the doctor or this or the bottle says I can take this, so I'm going to take it and it's going to jack me up, but, you know, I'd rather take something personally that's organic, whether it's mostly a, a herb. I mean, that's this is how a lot of our ancient ancestors and our lineages took care of themselves with herbs. And it's amazing that up until the pharmaceutical industry appeared on the scene, like in the last hundred years, right. humanity has been here reproducing and living for generations and generations without all those drugs. Just saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Again, who's who, my my opinion? Who's who's the best doctor for you as, for the human body? Because the human body is on this beautiful planet called Terra Gaia. However, Mother Earth, Mother Earth has all the medicines for anything that uh, any time your body is out of alignment, this beautiful planet has herbs that will bring it back into alignment. We're here harmonized, synchronized with this beautiful planet. The more we harmonize with the, with the herbs in that regard mm -hmm. and take the genetic modified out and bring in the organic stuff that's not modified, non uh into the body. I'm just saying, why, why do a lot of indigenous people look so well, live so well, regardless of what part of the world they are at? They don't have any freaking medicines. They go out in nature, figure out what type of combinations to to heal nature themselves. Nature provides their medicine. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. I mean, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Just because I'm a, I'm a I'm a pro planter. <laughs> that fun? Yes. So, um, just our discussion today. Uh, the intention of this is to really tap into where we're at in the energy right now um, that is pouring into the planet, you can probably feel it is intense. If you go out into the world and interact with a lot of people, people have gotten a little unhinged, a little nutty, a little ungrounded. Just the average everyday person who's like, hey, I'm just here like going about my business and I don't know what's going on. And a lot of people will blame it on things like, oh, it's a seasonal change or the time change, which was last night, right? Or, um, you know, stress from work or the state of inflation in the world or the upcoming election cycle. And while those things all have some energetic bearing, it's this energy that's coming in now that is just wanting to come in and clear everything out. There's such a purification of light source energy that wants to just purify and clear out and expose everything. And that's in you individually, you know, as well as exposing what's been going on in the world, like the power structures and the control structures that have been, you know, serving their own good and not that of the planet and humanity. You can see. So there, there's, sorry, babe. Go ahead. There, there's really this energy of, light, purity, cleansing, exposing, uprooting and shaking out and getting rid of all the shadow, the darkness. And that is collectively, planetarily, and that's individually in each one of us. So if you are feeling like poopoo caca right now, and you're having a lot of, I'm sick all the time or I don't feel good, then that's because you need to do some serious internal work, healing the physical body, cleaning and healing the physical body, and your energetic system, your mental body, your emotional body. And the solar plexus, right, our tum-tum, mm -hmm. that is connected with the mind. So if you have a lot of mind chatter, 
if you have a lot of um, weird things talking to you, giving you odd ideas, you know, everyone thinks mind is up here, but that's actually, you know, the power, the power of the mind, right, is tied in with that solar plexus. And there's been so much stuff put in there to infest and corrupt the mind, the thought structure. That's why like if you try to meditate and you sit down, you can't shut the mind off, right? That you have a lot of that going on. A lot of that actually is originated in your solar plexus and in your gut. And if you have a lot of mind crap, a lot of AI mind crap, and you're constantly purging and vomiting every time these energies come in, there definitely needs to be some internal structure work done. Cleaning. Yeah, energetically, Detoxing. mentally, emotionally, and physically. It all works together. It, it's having all those things aligned. That's what the the path of embodiment, that's how we embody. We, we have to get all these different, you know, subtle bodies, bodies, however you want to look at it, whatever your, your school of teaching and, you know, where, where you come from is, is to get it all aligned so that it all works together. And unity, right? We talk about unity and we throw it all over the place. We don't know what it is. Unity starts within. Because once you become unified, all those different systems get united and you become united within, united with that, that soul spark, that Christ consciousness, that, that energy that's inside of you. Now you actually start to walk in unity with self and express that outward and the reality starts to bend and show that in shape around you because you want to be the highest expression of creator embodied and creating in these realms. That is what we are here to do. That's why it's so important to get clean and clear so that you can embody these frequencies and be effective. We're all walking around. You hear everybody say, well, when's the new earth going to come? When's it going to show up? What's going on? I'm so sick of looking at this crap. Well, guess what? If everybody was aligned and doing what they needed to do to go through a full embodiment process and get that higher self and get those energies in and get the snarf out, things would start moving. That's the point. I'm just on a rant. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> what were you going to say, babe? <laughs> I love you. That process <laughs> is called transmuting a lot of the denser stuff from within yourself. I mean, call it purge, call it transmuting. You're literally shifting it into a higher fre frequency. Uh, here's another word, shadow work. How do you address the shadow? You view it. What is that? Is it a trauma? It is, is it a this? Is it a that? Which resides in your bottom three. Solar plexus, sacral, root. Mm. If you have certain traumas that make you feel uh, shake in your foundation, in your root, it can be root, root, sacral, all in one. Um, what What is it about there that makes you feel shaky? Is there a trauma? It's part of shadow work. Look at that, the not so nice parts of certain experiences that have happened in this life. You start healing that, you start, you start forgiving yourself, forgiving all the circumstance and all participants involved. You start, you don't have that that, you know, shakes and rattles your foundation. You actually grow thicker, stronger foundations. So you start transmuting that into light. Purging the body is no different. You purge. You're transmuting. That is a transmuting process of purifying everything into something lighter. Keyword, you go from being denser to being lighter. Not only lighter and lighter in weight, lighter meaning light you're emanating. When you go into a room and sometimes you look at someone that in your, your first thought is like, wow, that person's radiant. You're emanating that light. I'm just pointing, I'm being literal because I'm such a literal guy she gives me crap about it but hey that's how I learned how to how to how to, how to speak in English okay okay <laughs> um, but for me that's that's how um, that's helped me figure out how to you know help myself help my body and figure out not only is it in the physical the foods I consume emotionally addressing those emotions 
uh, those things that cause a negative, heavier emotion. And then addressing those, all of a sudden, if you're the type of person that eats for comfort, those foods start falling away because you don't need them, need them anymore. Um, yeah. As far, as far as embodying more of your light essence, I'm going to be walking around here and being just like uh, our beloved uh, Yeshua Ben Joseph you know, or Jesus Christ, as you may know him, and do what he did. He was a human being at some point, and he did some marvelous things, him and many of of uh, the scenes and his beloved and so on and so forth. So if he's able to do it, I'm in a human body. I'm no different. I can do the same as well. So what am I willing to do to embody that and not just talk about it, but actually put effort forth and uh, whatever that may look look like. Um, if that means walking out in nature, I walk in nature. If that means my happy butt is going in the sauna and sweating my butt off and after I work out, then that it, it is what it is. But I'm constantly listening, listening to my body. What do, how does my body feel today? My body feels more energetic. I think I'm gonna go for a bike ride with, with my dogs and do whatever but I'm constantly listening to how my body feels when you say well I feel like I feel like garbage well congratulations you just attracted more garbage to come into your life but if you start expressing I feel great well you started attracting more great things to come to you so whatever you say I don't want this you're gonna get that of what you don't want I want this you get that of what you do want it all ties into itself uh, this whole process if you actually stop observe and listen to your internal guidance to your body and what actually makes you feel the lightest constantly that's and, a good point yeah and every pat everyone's uh everyone's different everyone's body is different what works for her doesn't necessarily work for me and what works for me would totally flatline her when regards to eating habits um, cause it, let's just stick with the breads. I, I was a bread monster until my body eventually was like, okay, you've healed and interesting. Yeah, well, I've been a gluten free eater for like 15 years. So <laughs> my point exactly. But as just that, well, look at how radiant she is. And I'm, I'm, I'm working. On yes. Her. I'm 506 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but like the example of the bread I've started going through some healing stuff that happened to be ancestral and what is this? This shit. Okay. some of it was ancestral some of it was part of this life but as I started healing that all of a sudden certain foods did not did not uh, marry well with my body anymore and that's been an ongoing observation that I've seen with my physical body um, I've seen it with her at, at at certain stages since we've been together where I'm like, wow, you used to be big into this, but now that's fallen off. And you've got just learn to be fine with letting things go and not be so fixated mm. into holding on to things. Because that fixated and holding on to things, because those are your identifiers. Those identifiers that you hold on with a death grip, that's lead weight that you're carrying on, that you continue to carry as you live throughout your day by day, but you start letting go and allow yourself to just flow with yourself, literally. Yeah. Um, you start noticing certain changes. Your body might start, uh, will, is that correct? Will start changing. So you may weigh the same uh, poundage, but you might start, you may start noticing in certain parts of your body, you start getting smaller in certain parts of your body, you start filling, uh, yeah. filling up filling out, I'm, I'm sorry, and your body starts restructuring itself in its true organic form. Um, and don't beat yourself up over, you know, pant sizes or shirt sizes, because let's be honest, the clothes makers have jacked that up so, so much, it's ridiculous. There's no consistency ar across the board, so don't beat yourself up over, I used to be a size this, but now I'm a size that, and just psychologically beat yourself up. You're being deceived. Just... Well, you've tapped into something really important there, which is um, 
what you say and speaking your reality and your belief system and what's been put out there as part of like the toxic mind virus type of programming, which is these mantras of self degradation of disease of sickness. Mm -hmm. Like, um, a really simple example would be like, you know, Oh, quit your belly aching. Like I've heard parents say that yeah. to their children. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the kids, you know, tie in this like belly aching thing. Right. Um, just little things like that. But, what people don't really realize is think about what you believe, right? And what you walk around saying about yourself and your reality all day and look at your reality. Is your reality that way and your body that way and your life that way because it just happened and you're speaking about it or have you been speaking it into being and that's your creation because we're all creators. So lots of times changing how you speak to your body and about your body right. and your belief structure about the body for instance, your cells, right? It's it's well known, it's scientifically known that every seven years you've regrown a whole new body, right? Your cells have every cellular structure in your body has totally regenerated by that point. You know, skin, stomach, organs, all these different parts of the body, they have a different timing mechanism of cellular regeneration. You know, it's different for one organ, from one part of the body, from the skin. So it's all different. So it ebbs and flows. Right. But over the course of seven years, you've regrown a whole new body, right? So why should it be in a degraded way? Why should it be in a sick, aging, cell degenerative kind of way? Because right. if they're new and we're supplying the new cellular growth, with the optimal energy, speaking our creation and about ourselves and about our body in the most positive and abundant healthy ways and supporting cellular regeneration, we should be continually regenerating just this rejuvenating, this rejuvenating healthy, um, not aging, not decaying, not sick, not diseased, not um, abnormal cells, right? Which is what causes, you know, cancer and stuff, right? Those things wouldn't exist, but they're all put in there. They're part of the little mind virus, the things that we say, the things we believe, the things they hammer at you and they make you believe about the body, but you should be able to regrow and restructure a completely healthy body over and over again without that happening. Yeah. Okay, so something that, you know, we've all heard and potentially have said, I know I have said it, when, when you're like, I can't do this, I can't, I don't, uh, I'm tired, I've dealt with that for many years, just anything that makes you feel, ooh, you know, dimmed down, keep on saying that day after day, year, months, years, you start creating that physical body that's tired, dimmed down, depleted. But you start switching that around to, to I feel great, I feel awesome. Oh my God, I'm a little sore, but I feel really good. Keep on doing that time and time over. What are you telling yourself? What are you programming yourself? What are you programming the water inside of you? You're programming a higher frequency, much more positive. I have seen, and I know you guys, probably have seen people that are 60s, 70s, and they look very vibrant, very radiant. Look at their attitude. And then flip the script. You've seen other people that look very dimmed down, very depleted, very uh, eroded, let's just say. Look at their attitude. They are literally a reflection of their attitude towards life. So that should be a hint on to how to help yourself psychologically psychologically within yourself yeah what so. you say and what you believe emotionally mentally is a form of epigenetics and there's been a lot of research done in epigenetics so that they can control your genetics and make them do what they want them to do which is usually get sick make a lot of money off you and die so you know the epigenetics of what you say the frequencies you know all of that stuff, it, it all adds up, it all matters. So to wrap up and, you know, <laughs> circle back to where we started, the body. the body, 
we are, if you are here for the organic ascension process and that is what you desire and that is what you want and you are struggling, it is an amalgamation of all of these things. It is the physical body and getting that in, turning it into prime real estate for that highest level of self, source connected level of self to embody and come through the cellular structure and be here creating and manifesting in the physical. It is literally walking that Christ consciousness in fully to the body and embodying it. And we want to have, you know, prime real estate, you know, we don't want to have a, a junkyard. So that's a big part of it. Good emotionally. Point. Yeah. Emotionally. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> emotionally. Being able to clear the emotional body and have healthy emotions and alignment, which will clear out a lot of the density, a lot of the distortions, and a lot of things that still feed bad habits, separation, addictions, these sort of things. Right. Getting the mental body cleared out so that we don't have a lot of mind chatter, scatter, not being able to focus, right? So there, there's all these little things that tie in together. It is multifaceted. It is not something that is just going to happen overnight, but we have time. We always have time. We have plenty. It's starting today and making the commitment to each day be moving towards embodying more light, being able to embody these ascension energies. There, there's not... Um, <laughs> I'm going to make a lot of people mad by saying this. There's not going to be a flotilla of med beds that are going to come in and just attune your DNA right after you just finished a happy meal at McDonald's and smoking a cigarette in the parking lot. And then suddenly you're going to be a 12 strand, fully embodied, high dimensional, high frequency human after laying in this med bed for half an hour. If that is what you think and what you subscribe to, you probably should be following us. <laughs> No offense, you can create your reality however you want, but that's not how it's going to work. That's not how it goes down. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll just tee off that off of something that is my own personal opinion. And I have a mouth, I have a mind, I have a way to express myself. And I will. So I'm all about, I don't need a med bed, I don't need a technology to be a channel for that true organic highest ascension uh, column of light that is my creator, our creator, because we all carry that Christed essence within our hearts. We are all part of that which is, call it God, call it creator, cry divine mother, divine father. Yes, all in one. Yeah. Uh, source God, creator does not need technology to be fully illum uh, illuminated and infinite being that, that infinite lum luminosity that is. Yeah. That should tell you something about what direction you choose to navigate. And I'm not here to, we are not here to tell you what to do, when to do, or how to do. This is information uh, and we hope our intention is to help everyone. If it resonates, that's awesome. If it doesn't, figure out why. Um, and figure, and then figuring out why, figure, figure yourself out in the process, because ultimately it's, we all have to take our own responsibility mm -hmm. for our, our own physical body, our physical essence, physical essence, really, physical essence. Um, I have a bunch of comedians that I communicate with all the time, so don't mind me. Uh, but why would you need any sort of technology when the ultimate, ultimate, infinite technology is this physical body that you are embodied which is organic just like everything in nature right just like you know the lettuce growing in your garden the trees growing outside a tree doesn't need you know a beam of technology in a med bed to come and align the tree and tell it how to grow you know you literally it, just i i felt that thought form because i could <laughs> feel you i was going to go that direction too and you just got it and ran with it our our heart seed, our star seed, our God seed, that seed and that spark 
that wants to bloom and grow, right? And fully embody and become source, creator, organically, walking in an organic structure in this realm and creating on an organic planet in an organic realm and creating with all that we can do, wants to come forth, wants to bloom, wants to blossom. You know, what would happen if you buried a seed deep and no matter how much light, sunlight you try to put on that seed, if you've got three feet of garbage and junk in the soil on top of it, it's not going to bloom and grow. The light's not getting in. That's what we're trying to say. You know, you, you, you get you, rid of the garbage, get rid of the garbage, clear it out, clear it out. That's, and that's simple. Just as a, as a, as a disclaimer, as a disclaimer, uh, I can say this because I have been working on this for my entire life and really heavily for the last decade with my body. It has been ongoing it is not something that like i started doing six months ago and was like well i got all the answers now this is how it goes i'm gonna tell everybody about it it is not that it is not that it has been a long slow deep-rooted gradual process but learning that it takes a lot of work it takes time it takes time but it gets better and better. And the more clean the body is, the easier these energies that are coming in that are just gonna keep getting stronger, the easier it's going to be on your physical body and the more effective you're going to be here in these realms, bringing in your projects, bringing in your gifts, bringing in whatever it is that you want to create and manifest. It has to be that healing work. It has to be all levels and layers and that's how we become the effective creators yeah that's how you embody well i think it's redundancy to embody the body the body and body um but, <laughs> but that's where how you get your ins the that inspiration of things and yeah that have not yet been created but you're <clears throat> able to go into a higher reach of that which a lot of people um, yeah. cannot reach because you have energetically, out, you've been outgrowing people that might be, let's just say as a reference, everyone's at, at three foot tall, but you keep on working on yourself. Now you're at eight foot tall. You can reach the higher fruit than all the people that are three foot tall cannot reach. Um, and it's just another byproduct of loving yourself. That is actually a true form of loving who you are and for those of you that ha don't know what that is well that's a beautiful this is just giving you an idea a route that you may take to start learning to love yourself and eventually you never know if you're into an angelic high frequency ascended masters whoever you resonate with you may be having a conversation with with them one day whether it's telepathic clairaudiently or in visitation and light or whatever or maybe you meditate and all of a sudden you end up popping in at a certain i don't know temple of sorts and you start having an interaction with someone that you you're a fan girl or a fanboy of i should know it's happened a couple of times where i'm like okay i always said i wanted to meet someone so now they're in front of me and <laughs> now i got nothing to say should have thought about that one better but it it's it just makes makes life much more fun but it is something that you that requires effort by oneself on oneself for oneself and then look around and see how your reality shows because reality it is true it is the reflection of who and what you are and how you view life from the inside out so that's all it has as far as that goes yeah, I think we've gone, we're like an hour and 15 minutes in. We could talk about more of this stuff all day, but we'll be back with more videos. And we're going to go out to the beautiful nature park that's by our house and take a walk in nature in the trees. In the trees? In the trees. With the fairies. <laughs> with the, all they, the elements. They love the, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So. Connect with nature. We will see you soon. And um, happy ascension. Happy energies. <laughs> 
even though sometimes you're just like, I thought I was on the ship, but apparently I'm in a dinghy because I'm getting the Jesus rocked out of me. <laughs> if there are any questions or suggestions or comments or things that you would like us to come on and share with, please comment below or you can email us at unity for the number four Gaia, all lowercase, at gmail.com. And we will see you again soon. Bye.